There's no question the makeup of the American family has changed over the years, and with that has come a shift in our politics, for better or worse. Correspondent Doug McElway with part two of his series on the changing population. Tommy likes to be with his parents, and this evening is a little special, for it's the day for Tommy to receive his allowance. If Tommy suddenly woke up today, he would be an aging baby boomer, receiving benefits from a Social Security trust fund that is more than $2 trillion in debt. He might be tending to his aches and pains with medical marijuana, now legal in 33 states. He might see his childhood friends are legally married, while almost half the mommies in the U.S. are not. And he would see the U.S. population increasing through immigration because native-born parents are not reproducing enough to sustain their numbers, and immigrants willing to work for pay rates some Americans won't. Demographic realities are imposing wrenching change on the two political parties. The Democratic Party moving left. One poll showing millennials are more positive about socialism than they are about capitalism. Critics say that's no surprise for a party that has cultivated dependency. I think the left, in many cases, uh, likes people being attached to government programs because then they think, well, those we're the we're the party of big government, and that way, if we have voters attached to government programs, they're going to stick with us. That, while the hard lessons of socialism, 70 million dead in China. 20 million dead in the Soviet Union that happened during communism are often neglected in colleges now focused on social justice curricula. We don't have to be balanced because there's the evil corporation, there's the evil family, there's the evil government, there's the evil religion, so we're going to have kids for four years, so we can be biased. The Republican Party, meanwhile, has been pushing towards populism. The GOP is also threatened by other changes. Young families saddled with college debt and uncertain over the prospect of at least 11.7 jobs before the age of 48 are moving to the suburbs less, buying fewer houses, and rejecting traditional values espoused by social conservatives. Anything that comes across as harsh or draconian or directing people to, to, um, uh, to have a certain kind of family uh, appears to young people to be repressive and unnecessary. Digital technology has presented other demographic obstacles, balkanizing citizens who can now choose media that affirms but doesn't challenge their views while offering the parties new outreach. Neither political party, Republicans or Democrats, can rely on these old strategies of let's just get the suburban vote out or let's just get the city vote out. The reality is voters are moving uh, and I think that's a good thing in terms of political parties having to take their message everywhere. These demographic changes are hardly unique to the U.S. Tomorrow, some clues to where we might be headed from abroad. Brett? Doug, thank you. Part three of the series tomorrow.